Um, and welcome everybody to the Uncommon Threads Exhibit Virtual Reception uh, presented by the San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center SCORE Project. We're thrilled to have everyone here. I, I am ecstatic with the number of people that have showed up. It's, uh, it's getting into the holiday season and it's kind of crazy. And uh, we're, we're thrilled to have you here. Um, if you're not familiar with the um, San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center, we had a brick and mortar gallery in um, Tarzana Yes, named after uh, Burroughs in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, we had it running for about six years. It, and we had these exhibits in the, um, the center there and it was great. There was stuff hanging from the ceiling. It was there, there you wouldn't have believed it. It was fabulous. Well, the pandemic hit and um, that was the end of that. So we're thrilled to be continuing this virtually. Um, this is a real challenge with 3D work. And, um, you know, I when I was putting the exhibit up, there was uh, a, a few instances where a, um, a video was picked. We cannot put that up. Uh, there was several instances of multiple images and I, I, I thoroughly understand that. Um, I did my best to pick um, the best thing that we could put up. But um, that said, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And uh, if there's anyone else from our board of directors who'd like to say a couple words, that's great. In the meantime, I'm going to queue up the uh, award winners. And let me tell you, anyone that got in the exhibit is a, is a winner. But you, you know how judging goes. And you know we'll, we'll go through it from the honorable mentions going back through. And um, if the, I, I am still not sure if the juror is here, if she is or isn't. Regardless, we will invite the artists to say, a few words will invite uh, the attendees to comment and um, you know get a dialogue going on this. So um, that said, let me make one thing go away here. You can't see what I'm doing, but God willing, I can. Um, Ken, Susan, do you want to say anything right now? Um, it's, it's always amazing to me. I'm, I'm a sculptor and I work in hard materials. And it's always amazing to me to, to see these, these creations that the uh, fabric people come up with. And they're so varied, you know, from some are well, essentially 2D pieces. And there's some 3D pieces and there's some that are halfway between and, and things you can't even describe. And it just amazes me to see the, the originality and versatility every time. And we've had this fabric show for several years now, I guess it's the third or fourth time or something, and it just keeps getting better each time, so it's really great. It's kind of a, an unknown art form. People aren't, aren't aware of how versatile and imaginative the, the uh, fabric artists are. Uh, that's my comments. Thank you. Um, okay, I think I've got this up. Um... And, uh, you know, what, what I'm doing, I'm just using the share screen feature and running back through the, um, the website uh, images, which, which se seems to work pretty good. Um, good. I, I hope everyone can see it adequately. And uh, what we have up is the first honorable mention, uh, Desert Smoke by Emily Silver. Uh, Ken and Susan, if you can give me a hand looking out for the artists and, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to unmute them and, and get them in to say a few words. But I love this piece. Um, I, you know, prior to moving to Los Angeles, I, I did live in, I went from upstate New York to uh, Tucson for, for a few years. And I love the desert. 
And I, I don't know, somehow this one just resonates with me. And by the way, I went from Bingham to New York to Tucson because I couldn't stand driving to work in three feet of snow for, for six months out of the year. But anyhow, do, do we have Emily Silver here? Doesn't look like it. Well, that thing, you know, it's a, it's a lovely piece. It's fun. It it uh, it just it makes you happy looking at it. Uh, I I guess it makes me glad I quit smoking fifty years ago. I don't know, but um, it, it's it's a lovely piece. I I wish we had the back story on it. <laughs> so, are we ready to move ahead? Yeah. Okay. So we're going on to the next honorable mention. And this is this is a lovely piece. Um, this piece, um, actually, the juror had um, had noted there, there's detail on this piece um, that was submitted. Uh, the the stitching in the detail is really amazing. Um, and I, you know, I, I initially, I, 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 when I was looking at it, I got into one of the detail pieces and I, I was puzzled, but it, it's really lovely. If we have time at the end, I do have those images on my um, computer if anyone wants to go into it in any more detail, but this is just a, a really lovely embroidery. And do we have Bridget here? I don't see her, Pat. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. it's nice. If she shows up, uh, we could pop it up. I, I'm i not sure what, I, I have a feeling this may be a biblical scene, um, possibly with the goat and the potential sacrifice, but I don't know. Uh, so let's go on to the next honorable mention. I can move that a little bit. And this is um, titled Untitled Certainty uh, by Anna uh, McNary. Is Anna here? I'm looking. Okay. This no. is a, a skill, silk screen on cotton patchwork, um, a, a large piece, 104 inches by 72. This is a, a lovely piece. That's large enough to hang in the great room in your castle. Yes, it is. If I had a castle, I would put it there. And that, that is very, very um, striking, really. That's, you know, this is a problem with doing this virtually. When we had it in the gallery, this would be a big thing. It would take up like a whole T-wall section. And it's just, you know, I, I'm so glad everyone entered their work. And it, it, it's so great. But boy, in person, it, 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 it just, it, it takes on a whole new uh, reality. People can get close, they can touch it. Uh, it. It really changes things. Yeah, it's a shame. The artist says, I'd like to ask her about it, but anyway. Yeah, I would too. And this is the next honorable mention. Do we have Valerie here? Valerie, if you're here, raise your hand. <coughs> no, I don't see her. Um, well, this is uh, this is also a fairly large piece, and I, I am not sure exactly what all of this is. Uh, wire, rubber, leather, and found objects. They're fish hooks, or most some of them. Are. I was thinking fish hooks, but then I'm looking, and is it? Well, the, not... the bottom sure are. Okay. Yeah, are they fish? Susan Z raised her hand. Okay. Susan, can you talk to us? 
Turn your mute off, Susan. Um, there you go. I'll start the I This isn't. Oh, why do you want me to speak? <laughs> oh, you raised your hand. Oh, I was just fooling around. I didn't mean to raise my hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, we, we've had we've had a Zoom event. That, that 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 is just fine. Do not worry those about fish, it. Um, those fish on the bottom are are highly curved, and it looks like they don't have barbs on them. Well, you so, you know when. Before I actually quit going fishing totally, I used to you take a pair of pliers and squish all the barbs down so I could release easily. I don't know. Yeah. It, anyhow, I it's interesting. So we're going to go on to the next. This is the second place winner. Um, I hope Lynn Smith is here. I don't see her. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, is that something is, that's a wearable? Uh, you know what it is? It's apparently um, a drainage sleeve that you would use for like a construction site. And um, they, these were really interesting pieces. Um, as a kid, I was always prone to um, getting into things. I, it kind of resonated with me. Um, that's re I, I really, I'm very sad that, that Lynn isn't with us because I really, uh, oh my God, if these political things don't stop, I'm going to go out of my mind. Uh, anyhow, uh, I guess it's it's a combination of fabric art and performance art. So you know, uh, it's interesting. Well, no, it's it's a wearable, and she's just being there to fill it out, just like wearing a coat. You don't want to display the coat. You put the well, coat. Well, she's wearing that thing. Yeah. I, I, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, this piece is, uh, this is our first place winner. This is a, a lovely, it, it's a digital print on cotton and silk. It's a large piece. I, I think it's really amazing. Uh, do we have the artist here? Once again, no. Okay. I, you know, frankly, I, I was a little perplexed. Um, I, I, I think probably a better photo of it could have been obtained, but. Um, I think it's supposed to be blurry like that. You think so? I, I really do. But it seems to be tacked to a wall and. Yeah, well, it's not hanging quite straight. It's but not straight. hanging quite straight. The, you know, like the, the curve on the on the American River bottom thing is nice and smooth and uniform. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives the impression of a reflection for sure. It it almost looks like a double exposure, though, doesn't it? Uh huh. You look at the Which I I don't know is even is that even possible anymore. Oh, and you probably do it in Photoshop, super. Yeah, important. I guess. Anyhow, it, it's really, uh, it's, it's an interesting piece. And we're going to move on to best of show. Is Megan here? I really hope so. No, I don't see her. Okay. <laughs> These pieces are huge. Um. This is the type of thing that would not have even fit in our, our brick and mortar gallery. These are in uh, multi-story stairwells in like commercial buildings. And um, we actually, uh, you know, we were kind of going crazy because one of the pieces picked was actually a video. Um, this one is a, a still of it, and um, if you can imagine, this is going up um, a, 
Well, as you can see from the dimensions, 41 feet uh, by 18 feet by 18 feet. I mean, it's it's basically an installation in a um, some type of municipal facility. Um, well, it looks like to me like it's outside, outdoors. Because yeah, it well, it could be. On the bottom, it says you can see that with this crofter. So that's the side of a building. Yeah, it could be. So it, it, it's some sort of a monument of some kind. My, I, my, I, my guess is that the 41, well, I don't know. The, the, the 41 oh, is the height. So whatever it is, it's something really high. Nine black things. I think those are legs, if you will. It's kind of like a, a giant teepee. Hmm. And this is looking up from the bottom towards the top. That's my guess. Okay. Okay. Well, so that concludes um, having a look at the uh, winners. And at this point, we'd like anyone that want, would like to talk about their work to um, raise their hand. And we will gladly go to it. I'm just going to get set up here so I can quickly... Um, maneuver over to people's work and then bring it up on the screen. Which uh, one did they push to raise your hand? Um, do option Y, I believe it is. Yes, option Y, I'm on a Mac. Oh, you're on a Mac, so it would be option Y on the Mac. Um, on If you're just on regular Zoom, it's down in the, the bottom under reactions and reactions. raise your hand. Okay. Okay, Pat, Martha Bird has her hand up. Okay. Hold on, don't go away. I think I can unmute myself there. Give you, you can. A little, give you a little break from, you know, manipulating everything. Well, thank you. It's um, really a pleasure to be here tonight. I think this is an amazing show. I've gone back to look at it several times and each piece is just really interesting to me you know, wanting to really go back and, and study the pieces. So thank you for the opportunity for this show. So I'm Martha Bird and I um, live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm an interdisciplinary artist and I specialize in sculptural basketry. So that might bring to mind what my pieces were. Are you gonna pull those up or should I just go ahead and talk? Yeah, uh, which one would you like to do first? Um, probably the nebula. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. So I'll just first talk a little bit about who I am. So I started doing basketry back in 1994. And I figured I really focused on learning the foundational techniques. And um, I figured by about 2016 that I'd mastered most all the techniques that there are. And so I started expanding into sculptural forms. Um, I'm also a board certified holistic nurse, nurse and that aspect of um, body, mind and soul interconnection is really a big part of my identity and my art. So my subject matter um, of my art and kind of the over, overarching themes are about trauma and disability and hope and resilience within the body. And I really, um, there's a repetition of open spaces, um, imperfection, and the possibility of beauty and the broken. I incorporate that into my work. Um, also a practice in mindfulness and um, experiencing nature through the senses. And aspects of my own life really come out in my art. And this is a perfect example of that. So when I was learning this technique, it's called the Paragord, I decided to inventory all the items that I was using. So in case I wanted to repeat it, I would know how much to, to prepare. And so as I kept track of it, I noted 206 pieces went into this. This is about seven feet round. So it's a huge, huge piece. Um, so 206 pieces went into it, and um, I realized later that there's 206 bones in the human body. So being a nurse, being a holistic nurse, and working with the body, and then having that come out in my work, it really um, validated that I was on the right path for myself. Um, my primary material, why don't we go to Dancing Willow? Okay, I'll... <clears throat> I may get to it or I may have to move it. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, my, there you we go. That is also a spiral. I kind of did it backwards. Um, the primary material is willow, and that really is my um, medium that I work with the most is I use the shoots, so not the weeping willow tree, but special basketry willow that's grown um, in straight long shoots that are between, I don't know, six and 10 feet long. And I grow and harvest them myself. It's a ecological and sustainable practice that I have. I um, harvest the willow in the winter when it's dormant, so there's no leaves on it. And then I dry it for a year and that lets all the shrinkage come out of it so that it doesn't shrink when it's in the sculptural form. When I'm ready to use it, I will soak it um, I soak it 24 hours per foot. So the pieces that are 10 feet long, these were about nine or 10 feet long. I'll soak for 10 days to prepare it to use. And then I mellow it for a day, which means wrapping it in a sheet and letting it rest for a day. The water soaks in and it's, it's beautifully um, pliable at that point. And then I have about a week to use it. It starts to dry right away. And once it dries, then it's not usable again. Um, I really, really love working with the willow. Uh, the inner bark is um, contains salicylates, which is the base component of aspirin. So again, just being a nurse and having that sort of natural pain relief in the, the material that I'm working with. And then the smell of it is really, really wonderful. And um, the spiral is a really compelling um, shape for me. There's two that you've seen in this show. Um, there, the spirals found throughout the body from the DNA to the heart muscle, the bone muscle, the bones are grown in a spiral out into nature, the snail shell, sunflowers, tornadoes, and then all the way out to our Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. So the spiral really connects us from the DNA all the way out to the universe. And then that last piece I have, which is called then to now, that's a really, um, that's a really unique piece in my practice. It's about 66 inches long. And you would still consider this basketry because it uses a basketry technique. And that's the um, twining which is what's keeping the whole piece together along the horizontal. And those are just um, sticks and things that I've gav gathered from all the um, really important parts of my life. Um, and it's a piece about time. So that is a little bit about me. So thank you very much for letting me share that with you. Thank you. Martha, these are, these are lovely. Thank you. Uh, Pat, mm -hmm. Sophia Schultz raised her hand. Hi, Sophia. You're muted, Sophia. You to I have unmuted myself. Yay. <laughs> okay, so, let um, me find you. Hold on a sec here. Oh, no. I know where I am. Well, I I will know in one second. Let's see. Very nice. You, you have two pieces in here. Mm -hmm. Um, one is every tomorrow, and where, where shall we start? Well, um, let's start with the robe, the, the, uh, um, my history's embrace. Yes, hold on a sec. Because, like, that was my first official fiber art piece, and I didn't even know it was fiber art when I did it. There you go. <laughs> so... Some years ago, I did a painting for um, a call for art, and the theme was uprising, and it was supposed to be like what you were rising up over and how you did it. And I had met a woman who did uh, crazy quilting the previous summer, and I thought, oh man, you know, I'll put her in a crazy quilted robe, and it'll have patches to represent everybody, and that'll be really cool. And it did get used, by the way, but also my friends, my good friends, they said, what's well, a nice painting? You're going to make the robe, aren't you? And I said, no, I don't quill. And they said, we dare you. And I said, no, I don't have time. And they said, we double dog dare you. <laughs> okay, so two and a half years later, the you have to understand the painting was a front three quarters. So you could only see the, the front 
it'll be on your left on the photograph, sort of see the sleeves. You couldn't see the back. The back was a piece of real estate that was unknown. And so I had to like plan this whole thing out from the patches are actually pretty much duplicated from the painting, but they're larger because otherwise they'd be microscopic. Um, the piece, like I said, it took two and a half years. There's a lot of cool stuff about it because it, it has a strong spiritual meaning. And if you look at the sleeve on the, the left version, the front version, you can see the Masonic symbol and the bear. That's my husband. That represents my husband. And then the other sleeve is friends of mine. Um, in the back, the the left on your left will be my daughter and more friends on the other sleeve. Um, family members and people really important on the front. And then the back is a place that I used to think was very important to me until it turned out to be a cult. Oh, well. <laughs> that, on the back, that, that those one, five pieces kind of towards just above the center are reminiscent of Stonehenge. Yes, it's a, there's a stone circle there. And we would, every Labor Day, we would raise more stones and some of them were quite large. Um, and it was a great experience. I mean, I don't regret going there. It's just a kind of a drag that it turned out to be a cult. But, you know, I mean, I have a whole Quora article about it. <laughs> it was, it was, um, it was a thing. Um, but, you know, so the, all those ribbons, the braids that you see on the, the front and back are from those events where we would raise this, raise these stones. And the biggest one was like eight tons, you know, so it was this huge group. I never was into group exercises, but that was great. <laughs> so, you know, this place was super important to me. And you see the layers of the earth because it's in central, south central Pennsylvania. So there's the red, uh, the red Catskill formation, because I love geology, must have geology. Um underneath the stones and uh, what you can't see is like up in the sky in the back there is every single patch is about five inches by five inches and they're all treated different ways with different kinds of stitching um was the bottom of the back side like a, a cutaway of the the whole substrate below those large stones yeah okay yeah it's pretty much on a slant um and so it was camping there um and the uh, rocks were predominantly red. Um, so, and that was that was fun for me because that that just connects with with my whole feeling. And I think if I did more now, it would have to do with the creek that runs through there. But um, so this is that was my first piece, and I didn't know it was fiber art. Okay, <laughs> it was. Oh, oh, this was the spiritual journey that I took. And there is a quilt shop in Alexandria, Virginia that I went to, finally made it down there. And I said, I have this robe I want to show you. And I guess they thought it was going to be one of those little quilted jackets that everybody makes. And, and they said, sure. And I brought it in and they went nuts. And there was a class in the back and they went nuts. And they declared me to be an art quilter. And I was like, what? What just happened? <laughs> So, so that was, that's my first piece. There's like, it's almost, I would say 98% hand stitched. The, the, um, the shoulders and the side seams are the only things that were machine stitched. And that was over hand stitching mm -hmm. because the friends of mine and, and people gave me stuff to put on here and they gave me ideas and they gave me and they helped me, like a friend of mine helped me stitch the shoulders together because she wanted me to wear it in a thing they were doing. So it's it's an incredible, it's an incredible piece of my whole life right there. So, um, and there's like beading and everything and the upcycling of stuff. An opportunity to wear it very often? Not anymore. I mean, okay. I used to wear it when I was out there. You can wear it for ritual, you know. Okay. Um, but now it's uh, it came out for a talk in Bucks County, 
Pennsylvania this month, but that's uh yeah, it's kind of a thing of the past right now. Hopefully you have another piece things... with us? What's that? You have another piece in, a, in this yes. show? Yes. Let's look at it. Yeah. If we can. Yeah, there we go. So that's a this is a three-part screen. And this is the only way that I could render it so you could see all the parts because the, the folding screen folds in a zigzag. Um so this is called Every Tomorrow Will Be Yesterday. And it's based, I mean, the right-hand panel, you'll see everybody goes, ooh, Gustav Klimt. And that was kind of my intention. And the reason for that is that if you look at the center panel, there's all this fabric in the golds and the pale pinks and golds and greens. And there's a fabric store near me called Fabric Mart. And they had these silks in seven different colors, and they were all in the palette of Gustav Klimt. And my daughter looked at me and said, you're going to buy like a yard of every one of those, aren't you? And I said, yes. And then they sat for about six months um, until it came to me, you know, what I wanted to do. And all my other projects went straight out the window. Um, so there's... there's um, a lot of different techniques. The roses on the right hand panel, the, the ones that are obviously three dimensional, I found the design in a book on couture embroidery. And they were they were leather. And I was like, oh wait, I can make these. So so that's where those came from. Um, and most everything, like I said, most everything is upcycled, including the screen itself. Um, let's see, I, I have to thank my best friend right now, even though she's not here because she was the one who looked at the center figure and said, you need green lines in the fabric. Okay. Well, she she was, let's, let's move on to the next one. Shall we, uh, because other people have things to, oh yeah. Anybody else want to raise their hand? Wave at us. If you'd like us to talk about your piece. Okay. Nalani. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Sophia. That, that is just <clears throat> amazing work. Hello. Um, so I have one work in the show, and it is a handwoven rug. Um, uh, uh, what is your last name? Oh, it's Noelani Jones. The last okay. name's a little easier. Let me, give me a second, and I'll have your work up here. No worries. Take your time. I am. I do not worry. Great. <laughs> but um, I can just share a little bit about myself. Um, I got my BFA in craft and material studies and my concentration in fibers from Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, a huge part of my practice is based on this idea of kuleana, which is a Hawaiian value of responsibility to the land. So I'm really heavily inspired by nature and I sort of like to use um, woven and connecting threads and natural dyes and sort of place-based color as a way to like restore a connection with um, the land. Of course, with my name being Noelani, I'm also born and raised in Hawaii. Um, so even though I live in Maryland now on a farm, um, I sort of have this interesting like dichotomy between my childhood and sort of my life now as kind of this weaver farmer. So I made this work the fawn. Um, it is a handwoven rug, really heavily inspired by the time that I have spent um, at the farm. I have been living in Maryland for about two years now, being a farmer. And we have a lot of deer here. And I think deer are really cute. And I really love the deer. Um, and I also feel like since I've become I'm a farmer that the deer can be problematic and they eat a lot of things. Um, so we do have like a culling season in Maryland where um, sort of the state goes ahead and like lessens the population of deer. So this fawn rug was really heavily inspired, <clears throat> not by a culled deer, um, but about this little baby fawn that I think was separated from his mommy and got stuck in our fence that we have sort of running around to keep our livestock goats in on our farm. Um, so it was a really sad event. So I just sort of wanted to pay like homage to this little fawn 
and I wove this really, really soft rug. It is all secondhand mohair, which is a really soft fiber that does come from goats. Um, and the techniques I used to weave it, I don't know if I have any weavers in the audience, <laughs> but I'll just break it down briefly. Um, I did a little bit of clasp weft to sort of get the white shadings on the sides. Um, and I did a little supplementary weft as well to get sort of the polka dots. Um, so all of that is really just relevant to weavers, but I will say that it is a really hand woven textile. I mean, I didn't really use a pattern within the structure of my loom. I did weave it on a loom, um, but I really wove sort of the shading and the spots like by hand um, as I went along. And it is a shaped tapestry as well. So I sort of wove these little feet and I have a little tail and um, you cannot see it in this picture because I have hung it over the fence, but the other side sort of has like little other feet and kind of like a makeshift neck situation. Um, but I really wanted to not get too morbid. So I didn't weave like an anatomical like dead deer face or anything like that. Um, and I'll also just say, I guess I've been thinking a lot about this idea of vegan um, animal skin rugs because in Thermont, Maryland, we do have a lot of hunters and we have a lot of people who, you know, hunt for sport and for game. So I've been thinking about this idea of how mm -hmm. can we make animal rugs that are still sustainable um, and are still sort of these like prizes and these things that we value and cherish. So that's sort of some things I've been getting into lately. It's interesting. Some of these pieces are obviously major, major projects for the artist. How long did it take you to make that piece? Thank you. Um, this piece took me about three months, um, which doesn't sound like too long, but I have a really deep history in production weaving. Um, so usually I can be on the loom for about like, three days or a week. So it's interesting you say that, Kenneth, because when I was weaving this piece, I mean, when I got to the halfway point, I really had to like pump myself up, give myself a lot of motivation. And I was like, I have to get this off the loom. I know it's going to be really amazing, but I just have to get through it, you know, one foot at a time. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've made a few large pieces that have taken several months, even I'm almost a year to make, you know, and I, I appreciate the big pieces and the motivation you have to do to keep moving on it. And, and obviously I'm sure you're probably developing the, the design, if you will, of the piece as it was going along. Yes, absolutely. You know, I definitely, and especially on the floor loom, because it rolls as you weave on it, you sort of weave your cloth in front of you and then it rolls on your cloth beam um, as you draw the threads toward you to weave more. So yeah, I sort of, I definitely measured as I went and took notes, but absolutely the spots were very much just wherever I felt like a spot needed to happen. Um, and the shading was just sort of however much I felt like it needed to come out. So yeah, it was definitely very intuitive of what I felt like a baby deer would look like. <laughs> very nice. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> Who's that on your iPad? You don't have your name showing. You're waving your hand. We can rename you. Let's turn your you need off. to unmute yourself. I um. What it, would it be, uh, Susan? How would you unmute on the iPad? Uh, the lower, oh, I'm on a, me, I'm on a, a laptop. Oh, can you do it? Wait a minute. Who is this for? Can we do it? This is, uh, the, the, uh, woman on an iPad. We don't know her name. I'm not a demuter. <laughs> is her I name guess? Susan? What's, is her name Susan? No, uh, the name is iPad. Oh, just iPad. Oh, here you are. I see her speaking. Um, is it star I, nine to unmute? Go ahead, I don't talk. know. Talk. Are they talking to me? Go ahead, talk. Hi, uh, my name is Kathy Knapp. 
Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, how are you? Uh, okay, uh, my, I'm very honored to be here uh, with everyone and um, at Uncommon Threads. My piece is the um, uh, Bohemian Beaded Rhapsody coat. Okay, hold on. One second. Did you get that, Pat? I sure did. Here it is. Ah, yep, go. that's it. I, I'm slowing down. I don't know why. <laughs> that's okay. It's been a long day. That's amazing. Um, my name is Kathy Knapp. I'm actually a, a self-taught artist. Um, actually, I was a podiatrist and I retired from that. Um, and I never knew anything about quilting and uh, actually joined a quilt group and they kind of inspired me to try a little bit of it. And then um, all of a sudden I, I uh, went to a quilt show and I really was inspired with someone who did wearable art. And, um, and I kind of thought that's really what I wanted to try to do. And uh, I've been you know, creating things ever since. And this piece, um, this piece was inspired by uh, Freddie Mercury. Um, and I wanted to create a garment that would be appropriate for a personality as large as his. Um, and also with the iconic band Queen, I kind of grew up listening to their music and uh, he actually inspired me quite a bit. Um, uh, Cause basically he taught me not to follow the crowd and uh, really to be true to myself and my designs and not try to do what other people would probably be expecting me to do. Um, this piece, it's a long coat dress with an evening bag um, designed with the traditional quilting techniques, but with elaborate um, embellishments. I like to use um, metallic bead caps for beading instead of traditional beadwork. Um, and I like to use uh, deconstructed and recycled uh, bracelet pieces and jewelry to en enhance my surface designs. This way I can take like unwanted jewelry uh, for myself or friends and create um, a new form of beauty. Um, and also on this coat, I have two beaded floral motifs on the front, which um, actually are suggestive of memorial bouquets for Freddie. And uh, the reverse of the coat, um, which you can't see here, unfortunately, is embellished with my take on the band's logo that Freddie Mercury himself designed. Um, the detail shot, um, I think I had submitted, and that actually has a close-up of the, uh, of the um, band's logo. Well, yeah, thank you. We, we couldn't, uh, we could only put one image up. Um, okay. I've, I've got a so I, I, I did my best to pick the, the, okay. the, the one that, that I, I thought represented it. Um, you know, maybe going forward, we'll work on um, trying to expand that a little bit so people could drill down into a, into it. But uh, this was a real adventure going from meeting brick and mortar to virtual, and and um, we did get we got a, a great web web lady um, who's doing our work. Um, and, you know, we, we're continually meeting challenges, and, and this may be one going forward, because for this type of work, I can certainly see that you would want um, multiple images. Kathy, um, yeah. was your piece in a show in Sebastopol, California? Uh, yes, it was a different piece, though. Because it's... I looked at this and I thought, if this is that piece, it was remarkable. It's just beautiful. The, the work on it is so intricate and it's just fabulous. So oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was a, another coat that I did. It, I guess it kind of looks similar because I like to use a lot of black and red. So um, <laughs> it, I usually my color palettes are kind of almost the same a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really curious. 
when you went through the design process for this, did you draw it out on paper first and then go from the paper picture to the, the, the fabric or did you just start working on the fabric and have it come together the way it did? Um, I never really draw anything out. I kind of just let it um, create itself because in fact, that's how Freddie Mercury did a lot of his music. It just like, he didn't really think about it, it just happened. And so that's sort of how I, I create. I don't really, I just, put the needle in my hand and see what happens. Okay, good, good. It's a little different, but. Well, that's amazing, thank you very much. Anybody else have any uh, thing? Would you turn off that spotlight view and. Goodness, I'm just blown away. I'm a painter and I'm just blown away by, by what you all have created. Just beautiful work. Just lovely. Um, the person who's on an iPad who was trying to unmute, there you are. It says here on my phone. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is there. it? Oh, oh, no. oh, wait, I think you can talk. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I had a setting. I had to fix the settings. Sorry. Um, my name is Michelle Kelly. I uh, live in Northern California. Well, let's let's find your work. Okay. Uh, maybe you want to start with unwanted sheath. I uh, got it. Trust me. There we go. We're so <laughs> glad you got unmuted. Yay. Yeah, I, I, I just got a new iPad, so I'm still trying to figure things out on it. Yeah. Nothing ever stays the same. No, unfortunately. And, you know, actually, it's good too. So. <laughs> Because um, what I do is bobbin lace, which is a very old traditional handwork form, of course. Um, I'm sure many of you know what lace looks like. Um, not everyone knows how it's made with the bob. One way it's made is with um, lots of little bobbins. Um, and you have many of them. Oops, where to... Often hundreds of bobbins great. to make um, like a piece. So this piece, Unwanted Sheath, is from old um, plastic mm -hmm. bags from department stores that I cut into strips and stretch to make them smaller. And then I um, create my own bobbin lace stitches. So this was then made out of that. And originally I put it on things like over rocks or on trees and took pictures of it and put it on the beach, all places where you don't want plastic to end up basically. So um, if you want to look at some of the other ones, whichever one doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, nope, that's not one of mine. Michelle, what there is bobbin Michelle, what is bobbin lace? What is so that? bobbin lace is how you make traditional lace. Oh, okay. So yeah. there's needle lace, which is with made with a needle and thread, and there's bobbin lace, which is made with um, bobbins that carry your thread. Oh. Mm. So it's it's a form of weaving in a way, but you don't have a, your weft is not um, attached anywhere. You're, so you can manipulate the threads going both ways. And um, I've been doing lace for many years and I like to experiment with it and bring it into the modern age rather than always traditional. And what I've done here with this one, poof ball, is I use different size threads and you can see the um, the lace part of course are the black and the, on the end on this one and the parts in between are a fiber I make a fabric I make out of the leftover bits of threads on all the bobbins when I'm done using that color so I I because I want to reuse those things it's all linen and I want to reuse it. And you can see a little bit, if you look closely, there's a little piece of white traditional lace in there, um, here and there. But I'm, I basically like to experiment with the old lace, make it into a new lace um, and kind of make the whole bobbin lace tradition move into the modern world and not always make people think that, oh yeah, lace, it can be a nice collar, but nothing else. Um, so it's really fun to kind of stretch people's minds who come into 
learn lace from me or from other people or into the lace museum in the Sunnyvale and say, oh, we didn't know there was such a thing as modern lace. And uh, of course you can make anything modern if you choose, but a lot of people come into the, into a, a place like the, a lace museum expecting to see all traditional lace collars and cuffs and clothing primarily. And I like to show them that you can do many other things with them. And um, I just love to experiment with it. So that's it. <laughs> so th this one here, the periphery view is sort of a vessel, but not really. You can, of course, put things in some of the holes that are, that are open, but it's not something you could, of course, fill with water or something like that. But you can turn it and look at it from lots of different ways and have different sides. And it's just all about experimental and using up bits and pieces that you have and uh, trying out different things so that you look at things differently. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, just a reminder, everyone, that there are um, messages in the chat yeah. that uh, people have responded to your artwork. You might check it out. Yes. And you should be able to save the chat. If not, I will uh, I will put it up. And I, I see Carolyn's hand up. And let's see what we can find here. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Um, What's your last name? What's your last well. name? Burwell, B-U-R-W-E-L-L. -L. Let me. Oh, we ch one. we chatted on um, emails. Hi. <laughs> yes, we did. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome. <laughs> Hold on one second here. I hope. Oh yes, Nolani is still here. I'm a weaver as well. So she was okay. wondering if there were other weavers in the building. Oh, hi, Carolyn. Oh, beautiful. I, I think we got. I think we got your your works renamed correctly. Yes, you did. It's all. Thank, thank you. Um, thank you. I, I do that, and I, you know, it's hard because we have to rename all the files coming off of um, the the jurying program, and um, I. I don't know if I, I boobed or, or the lady at the website boobed, but we got it fixed. Thank you so yes. much for letting us know. Sure. And you can start any place you'd like to. Hold on one sec, and I'm going to have you live here. As a bit go. of background, I have been a traditional weaver for many years, and then I got tired of weaving scarves and shawls and practical things and um, took off in other directions. And this is a piece that's made of cabiso. Cabiso is the outer shell of the silkworm cocoon. Wow. And it's a very stiff, fibrous material. And there are many layers here. Um, and it's probably about four inches thick, but you can't really tell that on a flat photo like this. Um, what else can I say about it? You can soften the cabiso if you uh, mix it with soda ash. It's basically silk and it does become very silky and you could actually spin it at that point if you wanted to. So that's this piece. And then another very different piece is this one, which is woven, two layers and these are scrap pieces. It's made of monofilament, which is fishing line, which is recyclable even in the dyed variety. I found um, a fishing company that will take the fishing line and recycle it and make rods and reels and things like that out of it. So I felt a little better about working with fishing line when I found that out. But this is um, two layers and I <clears throat> was manipulating it both through the structure of the weave and weaving it loosely in some places. And then also I started burning it and pulling it and shredding it and just doing anything I could to it. And it started to take the shape of Africa 
And so that's become, that's why the title is post-colonialism, thinking that it represents the singed and frayed results from uh, colonialism in Africa. And then the last piece is probably the most traditional Oops. of the weavings. There we, go. there we go. And this was inspired by uh, Kay Sakamachi, who um, is a weaver. And she was actually the first person to weave with monofilament in the late 60s as it was just being developed and manufactured. And she made beautiful, beautiful pieces. But she went on to develop all sorts of double weave projects. So this is, when this piece comes off the loom, it's three dimensional here, you see it, but it comes off flat, but I've woven two layers at the same time. And then I used some pickup and some inlay in it, which might mean something to weavers. And then it's stiffened and it acts as sort of a book. And the patterning uh, was inspired by Agnes Martin and her work. So that's a little overview of some of the things I've done. Thank Carolyn, you. Carolyn, um, I'm a, this piece I'm looking at here is, is not large. No, no. Wow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that makes it a little more challenging. Yes. And the versatility and, and variety of these pieces is just amazing. It, I, I, I'm getting a much better, if you will, I don't know, viewpoint of, of the fabric arts. It's, it's obviously a whole genre like photography, where there's you know, anything the artist imagined you can do and want to do. And it's just, it just amazes me seeing these pieces. I, you know, we went through this last year, the same thing. I had the same amazement. <laughs> what can I say? It was very nice. Thank you, uh, Carolyn. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, Susan Z has her hand up. Okay. I have my hand up for real now. I was just <laughs> practicing before. Whoops. Let's see here. Hold Susan, on. what's your last name? Zimmerman. Thank you. I was heading for the Z's already. Hold on. Can here you show go. the can you show the space windows first and the other one second? I can indeed. So Thank we're doing go here we go to space windows. Yeah. And there we go. Oh, that's the other one. That's the constructed windows. Oh, you know. Sometimes this thing, uh, it doesn't point very accurately. There we go. But there we go. This is part of a series I've been um, doing with botanical dyes on linen. And um, so these are all natural dyes. And, and then I stiffened the linen. And I was, um, there's a, an artist from Romania who lives in Italy and she's in her 90s. Her name is Marian Baru. And she um, she has these forms out of um, fabric that's been cut, I mean, garments that have been cut. And then she takes the, re the remnants after the garment has been removed and she hangs them up and they really drapey. And I absolutely love her work. So I was looking at it and I decided to cut these shapes since I don't have that access to that kind of um, those forms. So that's what happened with this where I made these abstract shapes. I was sort of freeform drawing them, looking at her work. Um, and then the second piece, I, I was, uh, you could, you know, so um, as these are part of a series, I have some other ones. I got um, kind of tired of doing the same thing. So I decided to cut them <laughs> apart. And this is what happened <laughs> with, with what was cut apart. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to make it look kind of like an abstract painting, um, but it's fiber. But anyway, so that's those two pieces. 
Could you tell us a little bit about these natural dyes? What do you have? What are yeah. they? How do you get them? They're all from plants. Right. And um, plants might be matter or, um, well, some of the names I hadn't heard of before. But do, you, do you buy these like in a bottle at the store? Or do you? Well, they're different. Them ways. Some people forage in their backyards and get and make dyes that way. So there's a, a a spectrum. You can go in your backyard and you can make dyes from the plants that you harvest. You can buy roots and then minimally process dyes. And then you have to do a bunch of steps to be able to use the color. Or you can buy powdered dyes or extracts, where the, which are the most expensive because they're the most refined. So that's sort of the spectrum. Um, and the most um, kind of ecological people use <coughs> natural plants, but these are from purchased uh, dyes. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that the dye making is a whole another spectrum of activity, if you will. I was just yeah. curious if you were into that or not. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> um, I'm sorry, did you ask me a question? <laughs> no, you, you answered it. You bought oh, okay. the dyes you purchased. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I okay. wasn't sure if there was another question. Okay, thank oh. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, um, we have another one. Sharon uh, Wright. Has all her. right, let's find him. I have, oh, here we go. <coughs> okay, Sharon, uh, let me spotlight this. Uh, okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for letting me speak. It's an honor to be in this beautiful show. Um, I am an artist from the Chicago area. I have a, actually, I have two studios. I have a studio in Elgin, Illinois, and then I have a studio also up in Monaco, Wisconsin, and I go between the two. Primarily, I spend my summers up in Wisconsin, the studio there. And I taught art high school level for a while. And then I was also a weaver. And uh, my weaving uh, evolved into doing handwork and hand embroidery. And um, the series I'm working on now is an avian series. Um, some of the birds that I work on are endangered species. Um, a, a lot of the birds are birds that are used in uh, the feathers are used in the fly tying industry or craft industry. And as I've done my research, I found out how cruel many of these many of these industries are with harvesting the feathers from the birds. So anyway, what I do is I work from pelts that I have in my studio and I do photography and then I abstract the images onto fabric and start embroidering. And um, there's no feathers involved, it's all hand embroidery. And then um, I've always had an interest in um, uh, antique, old antique African beads. And also um, I collected Native American art. And I love the old beads on that and the, the patina that they get over the years. And because I collect antiques, uh, a lot of my pieces have that older antique flair to them. But I start out with embroidery and then I start adding the beads. A lot of these are old African trade beads. And then I um, add colored pencil and acrylic paint. And I do attempt to give it kind of an antique look with painting also. Mm -hmm. And then this piece has wool roving in it at the bottom and I embroider over the wool roving. And um, I've been working on this series for some time. I was um, in an exhibit at the Lay Yaki Museum up in Wausau, Wisconsin called Birds and Art. And that really inspired me to continue doing these avian pieces. So, and, and um, speaking of the, uh, uh, Sebastopol show, this piece was in that show too. So um, I don't know if you have any questions for me, but that's basically um, the series that I'm working on now. 
Well, at first I thought those were real feathers. And I was going to ask you, oh, no, is there a problem with you know, the migratory bird thing? And <laughs> you can't even own those feathers, much less use them for something. No, that's all. That's awesome. obvious you, you're making it look like feathers, but they're not. That's a relief. <laughs> right, right. No, it's all stitching. Yeah. And some of the pieces, I mean, generally, depending on how much time I can put into it, they take six months to a year with the stitching. And this one doesn't have quite as many beads as some of my other pieces. But, you know, I have just millions of beads in trays and cabinets. And I pick out each bead for color that will accent and go with the piece. And some of them have a little more illumination than others. Um, the pieces, this piece, and then I also did a cream. This is a Hungarian partridge that I took this image from. And I just did a cream colored partridge also. And I really like the more subtle colors and the browns and the creams, more earthy tones. So I'm kind of going that direction now. Um, I did quite a few pieces that were ring neck pheasants, which were a little brighter. But um, that that's that's what I do. That when I saw yeah. that piece in Sebastopol, even looking at it, I couldn't understand all the different techniques that you had used in it to create it. Yeah. So I'm so glad to hear about everything you had done. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of layering. That. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start out stitching and then I'll do some color yeah. pencil and then I'll sew the beads on. And it, it really is a long process just because I stand back and I look at it and I think, oh, I need one more bead here or one more mm -hmm. bead there. And I, you know, need to stitch some more. So, um, you know, like even with the color pencil, sometimes there'll be seven, eight layers of pencil on some of my pieces. So, it, it you know, it... You're right. It, I mean, it's hard to, and it's hard to explain to people when I try and tell them what I do. I usually have to show them a picture because it's hard for them to understand that I don't use feathers. It's all hand stitching. It's amazing. That's amazing that piece. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Wave your hand at us or nod your head or did I see you move, Susan? <laughs> it's like an well, I, I, you know, I, I think we're getting to the end of the Yeah. Did you want to show a couple extra views of that one piece uh, that you started out with, uh, Pat? Which one? That was the uh the, the embroidery. It was like the second piece you showed. It yeah. Was... Oh, the uh it, it was the one of the honorable mentions. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let me. It was I, the one with the goat. The, the yeah, hold. The, bear with me a second. I have them, but I've got to open it through a different program. So I'll, I'll get it open in a second here. Um, hold on. Don't go away. Duplicates. Okay, it's in duplicates, and here it is. I can't believe I found it. All right. This will just take me a sec to get the uh, get it framed up uh, with the screen share. And there we go. There's one of them. This was the, uh, is this what you were talking about, Ken? Yeah. Yeah, so this is one of the pieces. Um, you know, very, very uh, nice detailed needle point. And um, I, I wish the artist had been here. Uh, this is some more detail. This one. Wow. This I is line, a line day, drawing. I think that's a modern day uh, depiction, not a, not a biblical. Those clothes look more modern than biblical. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I uh, well, I, I guess Isaac wasn't wearing Levi's. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think that's what it's depicting. 
But yeah, I it's mean, just, you know, I, I'm not a painter at all, but when I look at paintings, you know, you start looking at the details and like you can see, this is, I mean, it's just like a painting with the shading going on. And it's just amazing. You, you turn an, an artist loose with whatever medium they they work with and they turn out these amazing things. Yeah. Yeah, it's, re it's really, uh, you know, the, and actually when I was going through the images, um, they kind of were coming up randomly as to whether it was the whole image or detail on the image. Um, if we want to look at it, um, take a look at this. I don't know if the artist is still here, but this is the detail on one of the um, embroidered coats. And um, it really is, get it in the center here. It's really uh, quite amazing. And, um, oh my goodness, let's see what else we had on here that, that people might this want to is, look. This is the uh, Freddie Mercury jacket. Right? Yes, it yeah, is. that's the Freddie Mercury one. That's the Freddie Mercury, oh. and this was one of the detailed images from it. That must be the back of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's the back. That's yes. the back. And um, I'm not sure, that's a diff completely different thing. Yeah, so this is the back of that piece. And I, I mean, it's, um, I, I wish we had to, you know, eventually, you know, who, who knows how long this will go on. I, I, I think everyone is really itching to, to really go back in person. But on the other hand, everyone is really loving doing this. So, you know, who knows, but with this type of medium, this is something you really need to be able to get like six inches from, uh, with your bifocals and go, oh my goodness, look at that. So. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're done. I, I think so. And I, you know, I'd, I'd really like to thank everyone for coming on a, a December uh, Saturday night. It's really been lovely. I, I loved hearing about the work from people. This is so varied and it's, I am mostly a, 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 a photographer and um, the, that's really pretty much it. So, um, you know, I, I just love seeing uh, this fabulously um, labor intensive detailed work that people are doing. Um, it, it really uh, showcases our humanity. And I want to thank you all for being here. And you know, I, I have to say that these these you know, Zoom video receptions, you know, you think they're they're not as personal as in person, but you have the opportunity for each person to speak clearly to everyone all at once. Yeah. A much greater depth of the imagination and, and thoughts of the audience, the creative process. And it's just fascinating letting each person speak for a few minutes and find out of what they're from and where their thought processes are, how they do what they're doing and why they're doing it. And you can't you can't ever get that in, a, in an online show. There isn't enough time. There's too much commotion going on. No, and, and the thing is with these, I do save the chat. So we can make the chat available. And um, with this, this was just a, a lovely reception. I will put this on YouTube and we'll get it up on the um, website probably as soon as I get the YouTube done and get it over to the website lady. Thank you, everyone. This was amazing. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending and participating, sharing your work and sharing your, your strength and experience with us. Amazing work. Amazing artists. Thank you. And thank you, Ken and Susan. You, you're thank you, invaluable. Pat. Oh, we're Thank you, Pat. You moral support, though, Pat. <laughs> Susan, Susan is the one that really is doing the hard work on getting these exhibits up on cafe. I, I, I don't even know what she does. I don't know what I do, but thank God somehow it works out. It does work. We're, we're a good group together. We are a good group. So uh, let me wish everyone a very happy holiday season. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you um, coming up. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye.